He's a good God. Tell somebody, He is a good God. He is a good God. And He is worthy of the praise. You know, I, I really um, wanted to uh, minister this word the Lord laid in my heart on last night. And sometimes God switches things around a little bit uh, from what you planned on doing. Amen. But it's okay. Amen, somebody. I mean, you know, God is in charge. And so today, listen, I, I really, I really, there, there are people uh, here today that you, you just had it rough. Amen. 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 Just, uh, just a rough time. And uh, you've been through a rough, a rough season in your life. And uh, a lot of storms and trials and tribulations and your faith has been tested. And you've been through things that have have uh, seemed like they just overwhelmed you. Amen. Amen. And uh, you need to be refreshed. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I say you need to be refreshed and Amen. revived. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when you've been through something, Amen. You need your spirit, man. You need your mind. You need your you need your heart to be revived. Amen. Amen. You need restoration. You need deliverance. Amen. You need God to touch you. Amen. You need the Lord to minister to you. Amen. Because what he has for you, amen, on the next level of what, uh, based on what you've been going through, the next level of the blessings that he has for you, he wants you to be ready and strong to receive what he has for you. Amen. And so uh, I, I want to encourage you today. I really want to I really want to build your faith today. I want to I want to let you know that the Lord loves you today. Amen. 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 And so this word today really is designed to, to strengthen you in your inner man. Amen. Somebody say amen. Because amen. it ain't over. Amen. Somebody, it's not over. It's not, it's, 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 it's not, it's not over. Amen. Somebody. And sometimes we go through things, amen, and we get lost in the storm and we don't we don't we don't realize that God is in control. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And we let circumstances get the best of us. But today is a day that things are going to turn around. You ought to tell somebody this is a turnaround day. You ought to tell somebody things are turning around. Amen. Go with me to the book of Isaiah. Amen. Chapter number 43. Amen. Tell somebody it's turnaround day. Go past the stove of my Bible. Isaiah 43. That's okay. I got it. Isaiah and I want to draw your attention to a few verses of scripture out of the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 43. It's our custom to stand for the reading of the word of God. Amen. I'm going to just share a little bit with you today. I mean, I know things are changing. Amen. Who do you believe that things are changing? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Who well, sees their life getting ready to change Amen. for the good? Amen. Yes. Anybody believe that today? Amen. I want to draw your attention to verses 1 through 7, and then I want to read verse 18. Amen. It says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honored, amen, honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Verse number 18. I have 
maybe. Verse number 18, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Somebody say, now it shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. Revival. revival, restoration, restoration. And, return. and return. Tell them, say revival, revival. Restoration. restoration, and return. And return. Tell them one more time, say revival, revival. Restoration. restoration, and return. And Clap your hands and give God a praise. Yeah. Revival. God wants to revive you, to bring you back. Amen, somebody. One of the things that's going to have to happen in your life is that you're going to have to become excited about your want with God. Amen, somebody. You're going to have to have revival, personal revival, not just a church revival, but a personal revival. You're going to have to become passionate and excited about your salvation. Yes. Your salvation is not tied to the things that you have or don't have. Amen. It is tied to the work of Jesus Christ and the love that he has for you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And you should never lose that because the Bible says that you don't want to believe in vain. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. That you don't want to believe. In other words, you can believe in vain. In other words, you believe, but you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't pursue, you don't, you don't go after it, you don't, you don't live the life, you don't hold to the life. Amen, somebody. And and, and Christianity is not about the stuff that you have. It's about the God that has you. Somebody say amen. amen. And God came, he sent his son that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That you might live the life that he created you to live. Amen. Every single person, amen, in this world has been created with gifts down on the inside of them. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God has created every single person, amen, with purpose and destiny. And it is the will of God that that destiny and that purpose be brought forth in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. somebody. For the glory of God the Father. And so it's it's time now, amen, that you get excited about the fact that God would send his son to die on the cross, amen, so that you would escape the very wrath of God, so that you could live this life full of power, anointing, and joy. Amen, somebody. So he sent us as I said, you need to get excited about that. In other words, he, he sent his son so that you could be released, uh, so that you could be free to be whom God ordained you to be. For the Bible says, whom the son sets free, free is free indeed. Amen, somebody. And so you ought to tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. You're free to navigate. You're free to navigate. You're free to navigate. In other, in, other, in other words, God freed you so that you could really be here whom God ordained for you to be. And what happens to a lot of believers and where they get frustrated is, is that they're looking at the world and the things of the world and they want to be like the world. And trying to be like the world hinders you from being free uh, to be who God ordained for you to be. Yeah. Uh, if you could be who God anointed you and purposed you to be, uh, God said you would be the light of the world and the world would see your light and then glorify your Father yeah. which is in heaven. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. But sometimes we're not excited about the thing of God because we're too busy trying to be like the world. We want to make the church movie stars. Amen, somebody. We want to be popular with the world. We want to be accepted with the world. Amen, somebody. Uh, Jesus didn't come to be accepted in the world. He came to save it. Well, I wish I had somebody. I didn't come to be accepted. I came to change the way things are going. Somebody say amen. I didn't come to be accepted. I came to step into somebody's life that the life might be changed through the power of God. Amen, somebody. God. Now, listen, that's acceptable. Tell somebody that's acceptable. To see somebody who was sick to be healed. He said, I want you to go preach the gospel to every creature, every man, every boy, every woman, every girl. I want you to tell them the good news. Amen. That I want to give them life, the life that I ordained. It's not God's purpose. Amen. That we be killing each other on the street. 
Somebody say amen. It's not the purpose of God, amen, somebody, that a woman will be raising her children all by herself without a husband, amen. Well, I wish I had somebody here. It's not the will of God that you be the borrower and not the lender, amen, somebody. It's not the will of God that the devil be wreaking havoc all up in your life and in your home and in your family and in your finances. God said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But I'm here to tell you sometimes the enemy comes in, uh, and he wants to snuff out your light. Uh, oh yes, 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 yes. He wants to take your joy. Uh, he wants to take your peace. Uh, oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. Uh, and sometimes the attacks of the enemy uh, can be so intense yeah. on yeah. your life uh, that you become confused and lose focus uh, about what's really important in your life. Uh, and sometimes the heaviness uh, of what it is that you're going through begins to weigh down on you and you lose focus. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, hey, Amen. Somebody lift up your head on your gates and be lifted up your everlasting doors. The Bible says, look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. And there comes a time in every believer's life where sometimes we have to have our gifts stirred up within us again because of the storms of life, because of the rages of the enemy, because of the things that we are going through. Sometimes we lose focus on the fact that I didn't get saved to be happy. I got saved to be powerful. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. God saved me, amen, somebody here, to overcome the works of the enemy. Amen, somebody, to have the victory, amen. God did not save me not to have battle. God saved me to win the battle. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying here. And so sometimes God has to come through and encourage your heart and let you know that all is not lost. I know that you're going through some things. I know that you've got some changes. I know that your back is up against the wall. I know that you've been under the, under the attack of the enemy, but no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Somebody say amen. I find somebody and tell them I'm so glad I'm saying I'm so glad. So the Bible says, now thus saith the Lord unto Jacob, amen. When he says, when he says unto Jacob, he's talking about, amen, the trickster. He's talking about, he's talking about the you that is in the world. He's talking about Jacob. He's talking about the man, the woman, amen, the person that you know, the person of the experiences that you had, amen, somebody. How many of you know that Jacob wrestled with God? And when, 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 when the daylight was beginning to come, the angel said, you've got to let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And the angel turned and said, what is thy name? And he said, my name is Jacob. Jacob means liar. It means trickster. And so here the scripture says, uh, he says, listen, I've blessed thee, O Jacob. I've blessed thee. I've created you, O Jacob. But he's talking about the natural man. He's talking about the limited man. He's talking about the man that only knows the things that he has been through. This is not all that God has for you. He said, there is another man in the man that you know. Yeah, yeah. He said, there is another man in the man that you know. Yeah. And so he begins to talk to Jacob. Somebody holler, Jacob. Yeah. Uh, he said, I created thee, O Jacob, and formed thee, O Israel. So he says, Jacob uh, and Israel. He says, listen, Jacob is the trickster, but Israel is the king. He says, Jacob is the trickster, but Israel is the prince. Uh, I want to let you know that there is a Jacob in you, uh, but there's also a prince in you. Uh, there is a man and a woman of God in you. Uh, he said, I created you. I know all about you. Uh, but there's something else in you uh, that I'm trying to get out of you. Uh, I wish I had somebody in here. Uh, you ought to tell somebody, Jacob, Jacob you got to get back. You got to get back. Israel, uh, you're about to come forth. Uh, he says, to Israel, uh, he says, fear not. Uh, I redeemed Israel. Uh, I did not redeem Jacob, uh, but I saved. Israel. Yes. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Uh, that's why the Bible says uh, that if any man be in Christ, uh, behold, all things have passed away. Uh, behold, all things have become new. Uh, believe it or not, this old man is going to pass away. Uh, and we put on the Bible says the new man. Uh, he said, I redeemed that new man. Uh, there's a man in you that longs for righteousness.
righteousness. Uh, there's a man in you that belongs for the peace of God. Uh, there's a man in you that belongs for the joy of the Lord. Uh, there's a man in you that's highly anointed and favored of God. Uh, there's a man in you uh, that can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Uh, but every now and then, uh, the new man has problems with the old man. Somebody say amen. And the old man is feeling the effects of the world. Jacob gets depressed. Jacob gets sad. Jacob gets wounded. Jacob gets disappointed. Jacob feels the lies of people. Jacob feels betrayal. But Israel knows the word. Israel knows that God is able. Israel senses the power of God. Israel is still wrestling with the mindset of Jacob. Y'all don't want to hit me in here. But God said, I've come to both because I created Jacob and I redeemed Israel and I love them both and they coexist together. Y'all don't want to hit me in here. He says, listen, I'm about to make your life work for you if you'll just hold on to a tick. Tell somebody, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I got to remind you. He said, I redeemed thee and I called thee by name. He says, Jacob and Israel, thou, somebody say, he's mine. He's mine. He said, thou art mine. So he's saying, I got you started. I created you. Amen. Amen. And when God creates you, he does it with a destiny and a purpose in mind. He says, I'm redeemed, which means he paid a price for you. Somebody say amen. amen. He says, I paid a price for you, and I ordained you to be. In other words, I bought you, I paid a price for you, and I ordained for you to be. I ordained for you to exist. I ordained for you to go forward. I ordained it. I paid for it, and I ordained it. I paid for it, and I ordained it. You ought to say, God ordained it. Somebody say, God paid for it. That's why, you listen, since God has already paid for you, you ought to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't be bought. Don't be bought. Oh, you don't hear me how to say it. He said, I redeemed you. That means that I paid a price for your life. But the world tries to do is buy you off. Yeah. Make it sell short. Y'all don't want to hear me. Like I said, the world tries to buy you with trinkets and things. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that the price that was paid for you, the Bible says that Jesus was the only begotten son of God. That he died. He sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. It was a price. He paid too much for you. He overpaid. Amen. Somebody. He prayed over. He paid over your worth because he loved you you so much. Don't you let nobody else buy you. You ought to tell somebody, I can't be bought. Can't you ought to tell that man that's trying to roll up on you, say, baby, I cannot be bought. You ought to tell somebody, I'm going to keep my integrity. I cannot be bought. I've been paid for already. I've been purchased by the blood. You ought to tell the devil, I can't be bought. Bible says that Jesus was tempted after fasting for 40 days and the devil took him up into a high place and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He said all these things will I give thee if thou will bow down and worship me. Yeah. And Jesus said I can't. Uh, yes. I can't be bought. You ought to tell the devil I can't be bought. I'm not going to settle. I'm going to wait on God. Tell somebody I'm not going to settle. I'm going to wait on God. Sometimes the devil tries to get you to buy out right now. He tried to get you to buy it now. He said, go ahead and be satisfied. Take it easy. He said, no, I'd rather suffer for a little while. Oh, oh the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, that Moses would rather be with the people of God. Y'all don't want to hear what I say. He said, I can't be bought with the trinkets of Egypt. I'd rather walk with the people of God for a season. Amen, somebody. Than be bought by the trinkets of the world. You want to tell somebody, I can't be bought. I can't be bought. Wrong with us now. The world is able to buy us off. 
That's why we don't like to preach holiness in our churches. That's why we don't want to tell people that, amen, along with the promises of riches and glory and abundance of overflow, that the anointing of God costs you holiness. In order for you to have power, you got to live holy. Amen, somebody. Just like it is in the Bible that you would prosper and be in health. He also says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Y'all don't want to hear me in here. We cannot preach prosperity and not preach holiness. I don't have a problem with your prosper. Drive the car. Live in the house. Buy the clothes. Get the diamonds. The earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof. But I'm here to tell you that without holiness, the Bible says no man, no man, listen, your house can't get you into heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Your prestige can't get you into heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Your reputation of being on TV is not going to get you into glory. Without holiness, uh, verse number two, he says, when you pass through the waters, he says, I'll be with thee. Uh -huh. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Uh, he says when you're in uh, over your head he said when you pass through the waters he said I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. Uh, he said when you feel like you're in over your head uh, when you feel like you're overwhelmed uh, he says I will be with you uh, now let me just say one thing in here uh, how important it is that you understand that God said I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you uh, but that's the promise of God to you uh, that does not mean that people will not leave you and that people will not forsake you. And you cannot confuse people with God just because people walk off and leave you. God said, I won't leave you. I won't let you become swallowed up by the rivers of water. I will not let you be drowned by your circumstance. I will leave you when others forsake you, when your mother and your father, the Bible said, when my mother and father forsook me, it was the Lord that took me. My confidence this is not in man, but I know that when I'm in trouble, my God will be there in the midst of what I'm going through. You ought to tell somebody he'll be with you. When the devil is trying to drown you, he's trying to drown you, he's trying to flood you with negativity. He's trying to flood you with thoughts of despair. That's what the devil does. He tries to impair your thinking and over flood your mind. He tries to make you worry about things that have not even happened yet. He tries to flood your heart with disappointment that you have not even been through yet. He tries to flood you with anticipation that things are going to fail and not work out again. But I'm here to tell you, don't you be consumed by the worries of this world. I got a God who was able to carry every worry. I heard the scripture say, cast your cares upon him, for he cared for you. I heard the word of God say, lay aside every weight. You can lay it on God. I heard the Lord say, uh, my yoke is easy uh, and my burdens are light. Uh, oh, I wish I had somebody up in here. I know that God will not let you uh, be consumed. I uh, heard David say, uh, I once was young, uh, but no, uh, I've never ever seen uh, the righteous forsaken. Uh, he won't forsake me. Uh, I don't care what you think. Uh, I can be like Daniel uh, in the lion's den. Uh, you can close the door and say he's dinner. Uh, yes. Find out that the Lord did not forsake me. He'll make my enemies my footstool. Somebody shout glory! He says, when you're in the rough waters, when you're in the rough waters, when it's getting choppy in the waters, your boat. Is rocking and reeling. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, when it get rough, don't you worry. Don't worry about the waters. Listen to the word. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the word will prevail over the waters. 
I mean, you know, God can speak over the waters. God can tell the waters peace. Peace. Somebody say amen. That means that if I'm on the waters, if I'm on the waters, that means I'm on my way somewhere. I wouldn't be on the water if I wasn't on my way someplace. I'm not in the water just for fun. I'm in the water going something. You ought to tell somebody my faith is taking me someplace. And every now and then, the winds of controversy have to test my boat. But the Bible says that you got to be pitched within and pitched without. When God told Noah to build the boat, he told him pitch it within and pitch it without. That simply means that you can go through the waters without the waters going through you. You ought to have five somebody and tell them I've been pitched, baby. The Lord pitched me. He fixed me so I can flow it. Walk on it. It might be rough, but I'm gonna get through it, and it's not gonna go through me. You wanna give God some glory? You gotta tell somebody go through it, go through it, go through it, go through it, go through it. Don't don't worry, don't don't worry. Go through it, go through it. God's got your back. God has got you. God has got you. Tell somebody God got you. God got you. Hallelujah. He says, despite where you are in life, God can still, listen, God can still grow your dreams. He can still birth your vision. He said, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. He also says, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. He said, listen, you're going through the fire. Yeah. Tell somebody I'm going through the fight. Uh, the reason I can go through it is because somebody's in it with me. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. I, I can go through anything. That's why the Bible says if God be for you, who can be against you? Somebody say I'm going through it because I'm not by myself. I can go through it. Yea, I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Thou art with me. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I could not go through it if he wasn't with me. But I got a God that's with me. He's with me in the good times. And he's with me in the bad times. Somebody say he's with me. And so God is promising. He says, listen, Israel. Listen, Jacob. Even though you're going through the fire, you shall not be burned. You're able to go through it and the fire not touch you. Because there is another man in the fire. You can ask Shadrach, Meshach, and the Abednego. When King Nebuchadnezzar put them in the fire, he looked down and said, I see a fourth man in the fire. And he looks like the son of God. There's somebody else in the flame with you. I don't care what the devil thinks he can do to you. There's nothing that he can do to God. He told God when he tried to come up against the man of God named Job, he said, I cannot touch him because you have a hedge around him. What he was telling him is that you are all around him. Everywhere that I try to go in, I keep running into you. Every time I try to attack his family, I run into you. Every time I try to attack his finances, I run into you. You are a hedge all about him. I can't touch him. And even though he's in the fire, the fire cannot put its hands on him. As bad as I want to burn him, as bad as I want to destroy him, I can't seem to really touch. That's why he said, touch not my anointing. Yeah, do my prophet no harm. Amen, somebody. The thing about fire, amen, is that fire destroys. But God says you shall not be burn. Amen, somebody. You shall not be burned. You shall not be destroyed. In other words, you won't be damaged by this. How I many you know fire spoke damages? He said, but you won't be damaged by this. He's saying, because you won't be burned, you will not suffer loss because of this. I know the fire looks dangerous. The fire looks powerful. But you can't look at the fire. You've got to look at the God that's within that's with you in the fire. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, and so you've got to understand uh, that the flame 
shall not be kindled upon you. In other words, the fire can't touch you. In other words, I'll be in the fire, but I won't feel the heat or the effect yes, yes, of the fire. Yes. Always, I had somebody in here. Yes, I'm in the trouble, but I'm not feeling the effect of the trouble. In other words, some people are in trouble, and they're feeling the effect so much so that they got to drink, they got to smoke, they got to cuss, they got to do, they feel the effects of the fire. But I'm in the fire, I don't feel its effect. That's why you can go through a bad economy and still not feel the effects. You don't want to hear what I'm saying. Your house will still be standing. You don't want to hear me here. The world can be going to hell in the handbasket. And everybody else's stuff is going down the drain. Amen, somebody. We're all in the same pot. We're all in the same fire. The rain fall on the just as well as the unjust. But I don't feel the same effects as someone who does not have God. We don't grieve like somebody who don't have the Holy Ghost. We don't worry like somebody who don't have God. I know what the paper says. I know what they're talking about on television. I heard the news, but I got a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can even ask or think. Y'all don't want to hear me in here. I've got a God who is my front guard. He is my rear guard. He is my battle axe. He's my strong tower. He's my keeper. He never sleeps nor slumbers. He watches over me. He directs my path. He orders my steps. He makes a way out of nowhere. He turns my enemies into my footstool. He makes a way for me. He blesses me. He knows my uprising. He knows my down setting. He knows my good and my bad. He's a mighty God. Somebody shout it. Somebody holler everything, everything that God has promised if you walk patiently yeah. in endurance. Yeah. That means that you can walk through the fire. Yeah. Patience is not resigning from the fight, but patience is a determination to keep fighting even though you have not yet seen the victory. Glory, glory. And so the Lord says in verse 3 of Isaiah 43, He says, I am the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel. He says, I am thy Savior. <laughs> he said, I'm not just anybody. <laughs> I'm your Savior. Somebody say amen. amen. You ought to tell somebody he's my Savior. Stop looking for folk to save you. Stop looking for your mama to save you. Stop looking for your friends to save you. Somebody, stop trying to be the savior yourself. Introduce them to the savior. Somebody say he's the savior. He's the only one that's qualified to save you. We know somebody say he's the savior. He's the savior. That means that he'll deliver you. He'll make a way. He'll rescue you. You ought to tell somebody he's the savior. He said, I'm the holy one, thy savior. He said, I gave Egypt as a ransom for you. I gave Ethiopia for thee. He said, thou was precious in my sight. He said, I'll give the whole world for you. I'll ransom everything that I got for you. That's how precious you are to me. He said, I've given up everything. When I sent Jesus down here, I laid all of heaven on the line. I gave up everything. All of heaven, all the power, all the glory was on the line just for you. Y'all don't want to guess how much God loves you. That's why you can't let your circumstances overwhelm you. That's why you can't get depressed right through here. Because God has put everything on the line just for you. That's how much he believed in what he put in you. When he created you and formed you. He said, I put something in you that I'm willing to risk everything to get out. Oh my God. He said, listen, I move heaven and earth to get you to the place that I ordained for you to be. He said, I'll move all of everything. Oh my God. To bring you into the place I've ordained for you to be. That's why when I sent my son to die on the cross, when he rose, the Bible says, he rose with him. And when he sat down in glory, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, he was seated with him in heavenly places. I position you to prosper. I position you to be blessed. I position you to have it all. I just need you to do one thing, to recognize who I am in your life. I am the Lord your God. I'm your 
savior. I'm your deliverer. I'm your father. I'm your keeper. I'm the one that comforts you. I'm the one that will be there in the midnight hour. I want you to be encouraged and fear not for I am with you always. Don't look at the storm. Look at my face and trust in me. Lean not to your own understanding. Let it all go in. Acknowledge me. I will direct your path. My thoughts are good and not evil. I've got an expected end for your life. And the end is good. Somebody shout glory. Six. I will say to the north. Thank you, Jesus. Give up. Your word. Your word. Keep my back. Your word. He said, "I'm going to mend you." Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to refresh you. Yes, God. Please. Yes. I'm going to mend you. Yes. I'm going to refresh you. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to reset you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to mend you. Yes. I'm going to refresh you. Yes. I'm going to reset you. Yes. I know your heart is broken. But I was prepared for your brokenness. That's why I am the mender of broken hearts. I specialize in brokenness. That's why I sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house. That he might see a work on the wheel. And see it marred. Not in the world's hands. But in the potter's hands. I am the potter and you are the clay. And from time to time. While I'm working on you. Things happen in your life. That causes cracks. In the vessel. But I'm here to tell you that God. Does not throw the vessel away. God. Don't throw out the vessel. Don't walk out on God. Don't give up on your salvation. Don't give up on this thing. God said I can make you another. Oh I wish I had somebody here. He says I can make you again. Another vessel. I can make you bigger and better and stronger. The cracks in your vessel came to teach you how to have character. Oh they came to teach you how to live holy. They came to teach you how to hold on to your purpose. They came to teach you how to realign your faith. They came to teach you how not to give up on me. They came to teach you and I'll remake you. I don't care how people are talking about the cracks in your vessel. How many times you messed up? How many times you failed? How many times you tripped up? God said, don't you worry about the critics. You're still in my hands. I'm still refreshing. I can remind you. There's nothing that happened in your life that I can't fix. There's nothing that's gone on that I can't repair. There's no room on your life that I can't quiet. There's no mistake that I can't undo. There's nothing too hard for God but to stay in my hands. Continue to trust me. Continue to worship. Continue to praise me. I will bring you out yes, some glory in you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So he says, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He says, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to say to the north, give up. To the south, keep my back. Bring my sons from afar. Yes, yes. He says, no matter how far you are, yes. he says, I'm speaking to every corner of the earth. Yes. And I'm telling you, come on. Amen. Bring my stuff back to me. Yes. You belong to me. Yes. I still love you. Amen. I still want you. Amen. He says, I want the seed to be blessed. Yes. I'm going to speak to the sea and it shall be blessed. Yes. I want you to understand that God wants to revive you. Yes. Yes. God wants yes. to set you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't care how many times you got to come. Thank 
God said, I'll reset you as many times as you need to be reset. I don't get weary. <laughs> oh, what's that? See, folk get weary. He said, but God don't never get tired. He said, I'll never get tired. I don't sleep. I don't slumber. I don't need rest. I can hit reset on you as many times as I, I don't ever get tired of you. I don't ever get tired of hearing your prayers. I don't ever get tired of hearing you. I don't ever get tired of hearing your praise. I don't ever get tired of hearing your worship. I never get tired of you coming to me with issues. I'm never too busy. I'm never busy. I got everything under control. Everything is in order. I'm not busy. I'm in control. Y'all don't want to hear what I said. You don't know who you're fooling with. I am the Lord thy God. I am your redeemer. I'm your savior. I'm your maker. All oh, power is in my Nothing is too hard for me. Bathroom yes. with your heart breaking. He said, I there's nothing I won't do for you. Yes. 
Jesus. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you gained your last. Yeah. Say, Lord, I don't know why I got to do this, but this is all I got. Here it is. He said, I remember that. Yes, Jesus. Yes. I forgot your foolishness. If you read the scripture, he says, you are honored before me. I remember you're good. I washed away your evil. Y'all don't want to talk to me again. He said, but your, your enemy, your adversary, keep bringing up your foolishness and your faults. And you're looking more at him than you are with me. But I come to revive you. I come to turn you around. I come for you to look to Jesus. I come for you to focus on the goodness of God today. I know you've been through hell and high water. I know you done had a rough time. I know you had the rug pulled up from underneath you. I know you feel like your life is in shambles. But I stopped by here to tell you that everything that you went through and everything that you have experienced was for God to set you up for this thing that he is about to do in your life. He's been telling you all along. I'm about to bless your socks off. Just wait and see how good I'm about to be to you. I need somebody to agree for a minute. They will give God some praise and praise for what's about to happen in your life. She'll say, baby, 
<laughs> she got power with me. You understand? She can back to my eyes. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. She, she's got power with me. She's my princess. And she has power. She can't know I tell another woman, hit the road. Hit, hit the road, Jack. And don't you, when I said no, I meant no. She come to me, I say no, and I will. Somebody say amen. amen. With God it should be no, but it's yes. Amen. Amen. The blessings of the Lord are yea. Amen. amen. I know you think in your head it should be no after everything I've done. But God said, no, baby, you got me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I love you. That's why the Bible says the callings and the giftings of God are without repentance. He said, I love you. I won't take it. I gave my wife, I gave my wife that ring. I'll never take it back. Somebody say amen. Amen. You can't give it back. Amen. I said, I won't take it back. Amen. What I did for you on the cross, I'll never take it back. Thank you. Jesus. When I gave you my spirit and moved in on you, he said, I'll never move out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Then I came in, the Bible says, You are sealed. Hallelujah. I came in and shut the door behind me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. He said, You've been overwhelmed by your conditions. You've lost focus. Yes, yes. He said, I understand. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I he said, I know all about it. Because I've been right there with you in it. But I had to find a day that you would hear me. Sometimes, he said, sometimes I got to let you get low enough. I, I got to let you get open. He said, a broken and a contrite spirit. He said, sometimes I got to let you get to a place where you can hear my voice. I don't talk loud. I whisper, baby. He said, I don't yell and scream. I, I had to get you to a place where you got quiet enough to hear me tell you, I love you. I got to go. Tell somebody it's revival time. Yes, it is. Yes. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. That's all right. See, I, I, I can tell that this was the word for today. Yes. I can tell by the eyes that are weeping yes. and the hands that are lifting. Yes. God is touching you right now. Yes. Yes. God is doing something in you. That yes. God is working on you. Yes. Hey, that's what I came for. That's what I came for because God want to shift somebody in the gear. I can stop by here to tell somebody God want to activate you. Yeah. Hey, man, he want to do something special in your life. Oh, he called you, he called you, he called you. He said, I made you, I formed you, I created you, with a, I called you, I got a purpose for your life. I've anointed you, I've ordained you. I'm ready to send you into places that you didn't even know you could go. Well, I don't know who I'm preaching to. Yeah. Hey!
is moving. All over this sanctuary, God is moving. See the Lord of the Lord of the He's moving, He's moving. He's moving. He'll never be the same. He loves you. See, it's why religion can't fix what you're going through. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus can. I said Jesus can. You can fix it. If anybody's watching this message via the internet, God can fix it for you. God want to touch your life. Give it over to him, right? I know you. He know you've been through the waters. He know you've been through the flood. But he said, the reason that you're still here, he said, I covered you, I covered you, I covered you for today. I covered you so I can release you. The devil thought he had you, but I kept you. Thank you, I decree and declare you will not lose your mind. In Jesus' You will come out victorious. What the devil stole, what the enemy stole from you, he's going to have to return a hundredfold. A hundredfold. Somebody say amen. I said, I'm responding to your call. He said, when you respond to me, I'm going to respond to you. God said, draw nigh unto me. I'll draw near to you. I will change your life. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together for me. Come on, you can do that. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, give God some hallelujah. Come on, give God some thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell the Lord you love him over there. Come on, sit to the Lord. Sit to the Lord. Sit to the Lord. Come on, come on. Come on, and worship him for a few minutes. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Mighty God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. refreshing you. I'm reviving you. I'm blessing you. I'm pouring into you right now. Some of you when you leave this place, you're going to have vision like you've never had vision before. You're going to see things. You're going to hear. You're going to listen. You're going to have dreams. You're going to have dreams. You're going to be dreaming. God's going to speak to you in the night. God's going to be telling you what to do and what's coming. God's going to be giving you revelation through the night season. God's going to be talking to you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. He's not doing it because you're greater, because you're qualified. He's doing it because he wants you to know. He loves you. You're his people. He said, I don't want to keep stuff from you. I want to talk to you. Oh, yes. When you get in your quiet time from now on, when you get in your prayer time, God said, I'm going to reveal things to you. I'm going to show you things to come. I'm going to tell you about your future. The things that are weighing heavy on your heart, I'm going to show you the end of that thing. I'm going to show you how it's going to turn out. I'm going to, he said, I don't want you to look at your current circumstance. I want you to look at my face. Because in my face, you're going to see my glory. 
You're going to see my end. You're going to know for sure in your heart. It won't be just another scripture that you quote, but it will be so real down in your heart that all things work together for the good of them. And it's not going to be just a Sunday scripture. It's not going to be something that's just a hot sermon message. It's going to be down in your soul. All things hey, work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And I'm called, I'm called, I'm called for his purpose. He called me for this reason. He called me to go through this hell. He called me to go through this trouble. So it'll work for my Shock glory and glory. glory. Amen. So, Amen. So stand on your feet. I gotta go. I gotta go. God gave me this scripture and spoke this word. Restoration. And revival. And return. He said, listen, there's things we got away from. He said, I want you to go back to prayer. Return unto me, saith the Lord. Return. Come home. Get back to the things. Return. He said, just return. He said, remember the things that we used to do together. The times we used to have worship together. He said, just return. He said, I'll revive you again. I'll refresh you. I'll renew you. I replenish your broken places. Just return. Just return. If that word was for you, would you just lift your hands and let me pray for you, Father? Sometimes we just get overwhelmed. Sometimes, God, we just get caught up in the life. We get entangled in the world. We don't mean to. We just, it just, we lose focus, Lord. We just, we just lose it. We lose it. We lose it. The enemy comes in and tries to distract us. Finances go crazy. Kids go crazy. Job crazy. Wife crazy. Husbands. It's just too much sometimes, Lord. And sometimes I just throw in the towel and I feel... I feel like giving up. I feel like throwing in the towel, but you keep holding on to me. There's a there's a remnant of you down on the inside of me that just lets me know that I can still make it. And sometimes, God, I feel like I've gotten so far away. But God, here I come. Here I come. God, lead me in the path of righteousness for your names. Take me by the hand, oh God, right now and bring me home. I want to be closer to you than I've ever been before. Oh, God, I miss you. I miss you. I miss our talks. I miss that time in prayer. I miss that worship time. I miss you, God. I miss you. I miss you. And I thought maybe because of everything that I've been through, you didn't want me. But because of today, I know that, God, you've been longing for me. I know that you've been longing to touch me, longing to feel my voice, longing to have me in your presence. So here I am, just as I I am. Receive your son. Receive your daughter. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. Families are being restored. Marriages are being restored. Things are coming back in line. Things are lining up in the spirit right now. Oh yes, in the atmosphere of the spirit. Things are coming together. Right? Hey, cold, a little more side. Hallelujah. Things are getting back in order right now. Oh yes, they are. In Jesus' name. Now just clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. dismiss you. What I want you to do is I want you to hug somebody and tell them everything going to be alright. Come on, tell somebody everything going to be alright in Jesus' name.